These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Uh, let's talk about the idea of pressure. All right, and as usual, we need to learn the key concepts. So pressure, uh, the symbol for pressure, I think your book uses lowercase p for pressure. Lowercase p. And it turns out that the formula for pressure is force over area. Our pressure formula will be force over area. Uh, and this is again lowercase p for pressure, so we need to know what the units are for pressure. There's a special name for the unit for pressure, it's called the Pascal. That's capital P lowercase a for the name Pascal. So the symbol for pressure is a lowercase p, at least in your textbook, and the unit is capital P A for Pascals. Uh, but like many units, this can be broken down into the component units. And the way we do that is by looking at this formula for pressure. Um, since pressure is force over area, we should be able to figure out the component units. For example, do you remember what the units are for force? Good. And this is a little trick here. What are the units for area? Meters or hectares. OK. Uh, I haven't even heard of hectares before. So I'll trust you and assume that those are uh, area. Well, let's start with the idea of, say, distance or displacement. What are the units for distance or displacement? Uh, but then, what's the units for area? Well, meters yeah, meters squared. Because when you calculate an area, you're multiplying two distances. So for example, if you're going to calculate the area of this rectangle, well, it would be length times the width, which would be 4 meters times 2 meters. Well, that's not 8 meters, it's 8 meters squared. Because we don't just multiply the 4 and the 2, we multiply meters times meters. OK, so the, the units for area are square meters. Uh, in fact, that's why raising something to the second power is called squaring it. The reason that raising something to the second power is called squaring it is because this comes up when you try to find the area of a square. OK, uh, while we're at it, we might as well remind ourselves what then would be the SI units for volume, based on this pattern that we've been seeing. Now, liters definitely would be a unit for volume. Liters would definitely be a unit for volume, but that wouldn't quite match this pattern that we're seeing over here, right? For after all, suppose that we had this box here. Suppose this box here was, uh, say, three meters deep. How would you calculate the volume of the box? If it's two meters high and four meters wide and three meters deep. Right. Two meters times four meters times three meters. Well, that would be, it wouldn't be 24. It would be 24 meters cubed, right? Because not only are we multiplying the three numbers times each other, but we're also multiplying meters times meters times meters. So that would end up with 24 cubic meters here. So that follows into our same pattern over here. Just like the unit for distance is meters, well then the SI unit for area is square meters, and the SI unit for volume is cubic meters. Again, the, the reason why raising something to the third power is called cubing it is because this is something that comes up when you try to find the volume of a cube. Okay. Uh, do you know what I mean by SI units? Have you heard that term? So SI is like the system international. Those are the standard units in physics. So you were absolutely right that liters are a unit for volume. And in fact, in chemistry, they're probably the predominant unit for volume. But in physics, the standard SI units are meters, square meters, and cubic meters. OK. So that's actually going to be some important topics uh, that we'll be looking at today. So uh, again, what should we say are the units for area in this formula here? Meters squared. Right. Because again, we want to be using the standard SI units. OK. 
Uh, so you're right, we could use, uh, in, in ordinary life, people might use acres or hectares or whatever, but in physics, we usually stick to these standard units. All right, so now we've seen that a Pascal is Newtons per meter squared. Units are going to be an important topic here, so we should uh, talk about that a little bit more. Now, um, commonly, people commonly don't use, in, in some cases, people might not use uh, Pascals for pressure. Uh, another common unit for pressure is atmospheres. Sometimes it's a lot more useful just to say uh, atmospheres. After all, what pressure am I at right now? Well, I'm in the atmosphere, so I'm feeling one atmosphere of pressure. Um, so oftentimes, people just use atmospheres. ATM as a unit for pressure, even though that's not the standard SI unit for pressure. Uh, and that means we might have to do a conversion. We might have to convert between Pascals and atmospheres. We need to know where we can find that conversion. Um, so when you're ready, let's take a look at your inside front cover. I think that has a conversion that we need for pressure. Find any pressure conversions there. I'll put us here. Now actually, they have one atmosphere is 101 kilopascals. But it would be more useful to say how many regular pascals this is. Well, kilo just means 1,000. So 101 kilopascals should be 101,000 regular pascals. And then it would be good to put this into scientific notation. So I think this would be the right way to put this into scientific notation. Uh, this would mean moving the decimal point five times. So if we move the decimal point five times, one, two, three, four, five, we would get back to this number. So this is the most useful conversion between atmospheres and pascals. Since that isn't in your front cover, maybe you should add that to the inside front cover, because usually you're going to want to go and look at that inside front cover when you're solving problems for conversions. But they didn't give the most useful conversion there. Uh, so you, want, you definitely uh, want to have this in a prominent place where you might not lose it, and say, in the inside front cover with the rest of your conversions. One atmosphere is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. Uh, this is, a, this is a, I rounded off a little bit. This is probably close enough for the problems that we'll be doing. OK. Um, you can see why people would prefer sometimes to use atmospheres, because that's a nice round number. Uh, however, it's not the SI unit. So in many cases, you have to use pascals, not atmospheres. Uh, and so if you're just in the atmosphere, you're feeling atmospheric pressure. So you and I right now, we're in contact with the atmosphere, so we're at atmospheric pressure. That's actually an important problem-solving technique. Any point that is in contact with the atmosphere is at atmospheric pressure. So we're in contact with the atmosphere, so we're at atmospheric pressure. Now, um, another important concept is the gauge pressure. The gauge pressure is the actual absolute pressure minus atmospheric pressure. So the gauge pressure tells you how much above atmospheric pressure the actual pressure is. The gauge pressure tells us how much above uh, the atmospheric pressure we're at. Uh, so, uh, for example, let's say that uh, the actual pressure is 1.7 atmospheres. When we write P, that just means the actual uh, This just means the actual pressure. Sometimes this is called the absolute pressure. It's the absolute pressure or the actual pressure. Uh, that's just the, the, the actual pressure that we're at, as opposed to the gauge pressure. 
let's say the actual pressure is 1.7 uh, atmospheres. So let's see if we can calculate the gauge pressure. So we can go through that together. We just need to kind of plug into this formula over here. Uh, this symbol here stands for the actual pressure that we're at. So what actual pressure are we at here? 1.7 atmospheres. And then we have to subtract atmospheric pressure. Well, how big is atmospheric pressure? Uh, I haven't quite spelled that out, but that's one atmosphere. Atmospheric pressure is one atmosphere. When people say atmospheric pressure, they mean the pressure at one atmosphere. So what would the gauge pressure be? 0.7. Right? 0.7 atmospheres. 